machine learning model registry is now available in Snowflake. In this new API, models are stored as first class schema level objects. Models can be found and used by other developers as well. The main objects in this new API are the registry object to manage the models within a schema, the model object to represent the models themselves, and model version object to represent a specific version of any model. Since this API is in public preview right now, all the models are not supported yet. The list of supported models is this. Before we go and see how to use this model registry API, let's understand how to set up the local environment. I have created a Kunda environment using this environment.yaml file along with this requirements.txt file. If you want to work with Snowflake model registry, start with this environment first and then you can slowly change your library versions as you need. Our secrets or our Snowflake account related information is stored in environment variables. So we have created this function to retrieve this information. With that information, we have created our Snowflake session. Now we will create a schema where we will store the model related metadata or model registry. So I have named the schema as model registry and I have just used the machine learning database. So we are creating the schema here and then we are changing the schema for the session to our default schema, which is not the model registry schema because model registry schema will be used to store only the models and the other schema is where the data is present in. Now we have everything we need to create a model registry object. So we need a session, we need a database and we need a schema. So we have created a model registry here. Let's run the code till now. All right, so we have created a registry object and now we will train a very simple random forest classifier model for the titanic disaster problem. We will start by preparing the training data. So we are just reading the training table from Snowflake and then we are dropping all the non-numerical columns. We will just keep only the numerical columns and we'll see how the data frame looks like now. Okay, so we have all the numeric columns including the label column or the target column which is survived and we will prepare the test data as well in a very similar manner. Yeah, so for the test data, we are reading the Titanic test table from Snowflake and we have prepared our test data set. Now we'll train the model using random forest classifier. Our model has been trained now. We'll use that same model to get the prediction from the training data set itself. Okay, this is what the prediction is and this is what the actual data is. This is a correct prediction. This is also a correct prediction. This is a wrong prediction. So we are not targeting for accuracy here. We are just trying to understand how to work with the model registry API from Snowflake. Anyways, now we'll just see how accurate the results are for the training data set. We will calculate two matrices. One is the accuracy score and the other is confusion matrix. Okay, so we have our values. As we see, the accuracy score is 0.83. So it is more than 83% accurate. Now, this is the simplest form of our model and this is what we will call our version one random forest classifier model. Now that we have our random forest classifier version one model ready, we will log this model into our registry. So to log a model, we will call this log model method from the registry API and it takes three mandatory arguments. One, the model itself. So this is a pickleable or serializable Python model object. The model name, this is a string and it cannot be changed once you have logged one model and then the name of the version. So you can give it anything like v1, v2 or whatever the version is. One quick note, it does not support the numeric values directly. It will have to have v or some kind of string or character in it. Other important information is that model name and version name combination should be unique. The model name cannot have dash in it. I mean, if you see the name of the model for our random forest classifier version one, it has underscore, I have tried this, it did not work. So this is what we have to use, no dash. Sometimes it's necessary to mention Python dependencies through Conda dependencies or P requirements parameters. So if we hover over this, we will see that there are two arguments, Conda dependencies and P requirements. Using one of these, or maybe both, we can mention the Python dependencies. Now, for this instance, we needed to mention the packaging Python library. 
Now we can add a comment for this model and this is actually a comment for the version of the model. So comment for V1. Now matrix, this is just a dictionary. We can have any key value pair in it and I have stored the accuracy scores in it. So the training accuracy score and the training confusion matrix that we got here. So let's just log the model. As we see, the model is being logged to the model registry and we will see this kind of output if it's working. All right, so our random forest classifier version one has been logged. Now we will train another model, a very simple linear SBC model just for the sake of this demo. So that we have two models to see in our model registry. Let's do that now. So the training data set is same, it's just the algorithm that is different. Our model training is done. Now we will get a prediction on the training data set itself, just like we did for the random forest classifier. Okay, we have got our predictions. Now let's calculate the accuracy scores. As we see, this model is performing worse than our random forest classifier. Anyway, accuracy is not our target here. All right, so matrix calculation is done. Now we will log the model. Okay, similarly, we have the model itself. This is a pickleable or serializable file. Then the model name, Titanic underscore linear SVC, then version name, and this is a different model. So we can have V1 again, but had it been the random forest classifier model, we could not have used V1. We had to use a different version. Anyways, we will see that later. Then the peep requirements, same, and the comments, and the metrics, the accuracy scores. Then we have to mention the sample data input as well. And that will be used to infer the schema of the data set that the model has been trained on. Let's log this model as well. All right, our linear SVC version one model has also been logged. Now we will train our second version of the random forest classifier. For that, we will do a bit of feature engineering. And for that, we have these functions defined. We'll just execute this cell to have the functions available in the session or in the namespace. And then we will just call those functions to prepare our data set. All right. So our data set has been prepared or rather our training data set has been prepared. And this is how it looks like. So we have quite a bit of columns and all have been encoded if those are categorical columns. So we have only numeric values and the training data set is now ready. All right. So we have used these functions to do the feature engineering and also these ones for the record. Now we will use the same functions to prepare our test data set. Let's do that. All right. Our test data set is also ready. Now we can train our random forest classifier version 2 model with the new data set. All right. So our version 2 random forest classifier model has been trained and we will use that model to get a prediction for the training data set. Okay, this is what the prediction column looks like. Now we will calculate the accuracy to see how it actually performed. Okay, as we see, it has 98% accuracy. So that is way better than our previous models. Now with that information, we will log our version 2 model. So we will just use the same method and same parameters to log our version 2 random forest classifier model. All right, our version 2 random forest classifier model has also been logged into our registry. Just to summarize what we have done so far, we have trained two versions of random forest model having this name, and we have trained one version of linear SVC model having this name in the registry. Now we will see how to use the models that we have logged. If we have logged model right now, we will get model version as a return type. We can use this instance or this object to run a prediction on a data set. Let's do that. So we're using that MB instance or MB variable, and we're calling the run method on top of it to get prediction on this test data set. And we will have this function name parameter as well that we have to mention. And the value for this is predict because the predict function or method will run under the hood to get the prediction. All right. Now we have used the return value from the log model method to get some predictions on a data set. Now we will calculate the accuracy of it just to see. Yep, we have the same accuracy. Now we will use the model from the registry itself. So we will get a reference to a model from the registry and we'll use that model to get predictions. Now there's two ways to do that. There is two ways to get a model reference from a model registry. 
One is this models method that will return the list of all models registered in a model registry. And the other is the get model method. And with the get model method, you can get a specific model and that you can use to get predictions. Okay, let's see how we can work with the models method. So we will just call the models method on top of the registry object and we will get the list of models. Let's see how it looks like. Yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting the list of all models and then I'm just printing the name of each model. So the name of our linear SVC model is titanic underscore linear SVC and the random forest model is titanic underscore RF. Great. Now we will just use the titanic random forest model and we will see what versions we have for that model. As we know that we have two versions for the random forest model and we can see that we have two instances returned by the versions method. We can also see the versions or the list of versions for a model by calling the show versions method. Let's see how it looks like and it will have a lot of information not just the instance object. So you will see all the details related to the models. Now we will use that random forest model and the version one of that model to get a prediction. Just to clarify, the model objects cannot be used to run predictions. It has to be the model version objects. Model version will be present under model objects. Now we will just use the random forest model object by using this and then we will just call the version method on top of it having the parameter v1. So we will get the random forest model v1. Then we will use that model version to run a prediction on the test data set for the v1 model and we'll see how the data looks like. All right, so we have got our prediction and we have used the models method to get the list of all models. And from that, we have chosen one model and then one specific version of that model. Then we have used that specific version of that model to get a prediction. And this is how it looks like. Now we will see the second method of getting a reference to a model from the model registry. This get model method can take the model name as a parameter and get the model object. Now with that, we can call the versions method to see all the versions available for this model. Just as we have seen earlier like this. The RF model has two versions but the linear SVC model has one version. And we have retrieved the linear SVC model instance. So it has only one version. Now we will use that view one of the linear SVC model to get some predictions from that test data set. Yep, so this is how the prediction looked like and this is how we can use the model registry API from Snowflake. Now this model registry API is in public preview. It is not generally available yet. So it is not extremely matured. Apart from that, there is a lot many things you can do with the API. You can interact with this API with SQLs that we're not going to see in this video. Also, we, we can do a lot of other things like we can interact with the metadata for any model or versions. By metadata, I mean the comments and etc. etc. The comments can be changed. The default version of a model can be changed. And for each model, there will be a default version out of all the versions available for a model. Let's see how it looks like. It should be there somewhere. If we just call the show models method on the registry object, then we will see a pandas data frame having the details about all the models that have been registered to the registry API. And as we know that we have registered two versions of our random forest model, and we see two versions here, and one version of the linear SBC model that we see here. And for each of these two models, we have a default version, which is V1 for both of them. 